art is one of those freeing things that that we don't have to stand in line. We don't have to conform. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. Welcome to episode six of the Bold Artist Podcast. We're happy to introduce our guest, Adam Meikle, a talented artist, entrepreneur, and risk taker from British Columbia, Canada, homeland of Bold School. That's right. Bold School proudly produces the Bold Artist Podcast. If you're watching here on the Bold School YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe. You can also find us on your audio apps of choice, Apple, Google, Spotify. And if you find us there, we'll be under the Bold Artist Podcast and be sure to hit follow and leave a review. Here on the show, we love to give artists voices, to hear artists' stories, and to join in a global conversation about what it takes to be brave with your art. Our guest, Adam Meikle, is one of those brave artists. Let's imagine for a minute. Imagine opening a storefront studio in your community where spectators can watch you paint and they're free to scrutinize your work in progress. Imagine a few short years later opening a cafe adjacent to your studio where Customers can have an authentic dining experience surrounded by your art, and that sometimes you'll even speed paint commissions in front of your clients while they dine. Imagine the bravery, the risk, and the faith it takes to make steps like that. You're going to meet Adam Meikle, who is a man who has done everything I just described. You're going to find that my interview with Adam was very relaxed. Actually, we didn't even know we would be featured on YouTube. We thought we were recording for audio. So you are going to hear life happen all around us. You'll hear the sound of a brass bell on Adam's studio door as it opens and closes, the ring of an old-fashioned telephone, the clatter of dishes as the cafe customers are served, and We wouldn't want it any other way because it's such a privilege to get a glimpse inside of a busy artist's world. Be sure to check out the show notes to see Adam's links. Without further delay, let's go over to my interview with Adam Meikle. For starters, Adam, can you give us a snapshot of what life looks like for you right now? Who are you? Your lifestyle, studio, community? Like a typical day. (laughs) <laughs> Typical day in the life of Adam Meikle, artist. <laughs> uh, I usually fly out of bed, almost late for something. <laughs> we're we're kind of we're kind of entrenched in the community a bit, yes. so we have responsibilities with different boards and committees that we sit on. So our lives are are busy. So uh, when you're saying we, well, let's paint the picture here. It's your family, right? The Meikle yeah. family. Yeah. yeah, for sure. We, it's a, a family business. And, and now that we have two businesses under the same roof, it's even, even busier. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hectic. Our kids are, are older, so they're pretty self-sufficient. They tell us what they, what they need. Mm-hmm. And we try and involve them as much as we can, but it doesn't always work. So we would, Definitely fly out of bed, come down to the studio, get organized for the day, see what's on the calendar. I could have one class, I could have four. Um, I got due dates on my calendar so that I'm really old school. Like I have a paper calendar that that's that's where I put everything. So if I see something that's due that day, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it done. And I have several things due today. But I think I'm on top of it today, actually. And you made time for a podcast, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so That's very, great. Very busy life, and uh, we love every every minute of it because we're we're doing what we what we desire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So then, just to kind of paint that picture, um, 
you and your family live here in Salmon Arm, BC. You have a studio and a cafe called the Night Cafe right on one of the busiest streets in Salmon Arm. And tell us about that. Tell us a little bit about your studio and your cafe. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people's dreams to have a cafe because it's romantic. And when you couple that with, with art and uh, community, it uh, you can't help but fall in love with at least the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and we we battled with uh, with ourselves on what we were what we were going to do what what we were going to call it and so to to go back a little bit we always had this dream of opening a cafe never an art studio I always painted but it was it was it kind of took second to to our dream I'd be my, my wife and I. So mm -hmm. we always talked about the cafe and planned about it and we go to every cafe we can just to see what other people are doing because people are amazing and they will come up with great ideas that that can be I guess brought to other communities. So when we moved to Salmon Arm, we accidentally opened a studio instead and we we've done that for almost well, five and a half years, I guess. Um, we opened a studio and we, it was, at first it was just a space for me to be creative because there wasn't enough space at home. And then after signing a lease and, and enjoying what I was doing and not wanting to go find a, a normal job to mm -hmm. working for the man kind of thing, uh, we decided to make it viable and start teaching what I know to to anyone that wanted to join. So we started with kids, of course, because that's an easy, safe. They're excited about anything they do. Mm -hmm. and then I started to share how how I paint. Um, at first, I was awfully, awfully nervous because I am not formally trained as a painter. Formally trained as other things, but not painting. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like people got my my logical approach and my lack of fear doing that, and um, it's grown from there. We noticed that every weekend we were we were recycling a lot. We would take out um, beverage bottles and takeout boxes that people would bring here when they're celebrating. So. We decided to, to open a, the night cafe and kind of do a one-stop shop kind of deal where they can enjoy food and beverage and and an art, artsy kind of vibe and be creative if that's the way they want to do or just be in cre creativity if, mm -hmm. if they haven't discovered it yet. Yes, yeah, so your studio and the night cafe are in my opinion, two of the most beautiful, dreamy places that you can go to in Salmon Arm. Your art is on the left-hand side of the building and is um, stunning, creative. I want you to describe a little bit more how you would describe your work. But on the right-hand side is this night cafe with an eclectic, I'd say a little bit of a, you know, corner of Italy feeling. Uh -huh. I was even in there one evening when an accordion player was <laughs> was making some tunes in the corner. So Adam, how do you describe your art? Yeah, I do what I want. <laughs> I love that. Uh, sometimes it gets me in trouble. What I truly think about my style versus the the art world not that that's the way it is, but but to kind of compare or to kind of put words to it, I believe that the artists before us have have freed the the modern artist from a lot of constraints. Um, I think anything goes nowadays, mm -hmm. and I think that we don't have to to be so so serious and so concerned about following the rules 
because art is one of those freeing things that that we don't have to stand in line we don't have to conform so i i do whatever it takes to to build a visual piece of art that i appreciate and when i appreciate it then i feel good about passing it on the client or hanging it on the wall saying that i i often run out of painting so i hang unfinished stuff just to just to get a little bit of criticism and uh, see what <laughs> see what people like and don't like but I, I use bold bright colors and texture not only not only sharp harsh thick textures but sometimes the painting calls for the phones are again <laughs> adam has an old fashioned telephone <laughs> Some sometimes uh, a painting, I think, desires a softer, smoother texture. So I like to use the 3D realm in that 2D format, so that I can get a feel right off the bat with, without them looking into the painting too much. Mm -hmm. nice. Bold colors, um, using color theory, using. Um, even popular colors sometimes i will paint something so gray that it just flies off the wall before i can even price it because it goes with the modern decor and i know that and i it may be uh, sneaky but i can break away from my color palette and, and do something a little more modern and, and it still work within my style if i stick to to obscuring but but not um, not eliminating form or shape or something real to attach to. Yes, I do love that about your work. I feel that you you push into an abstract realm, but still keep the subject matter uh, recognizable. And I really appreciate that. And you have a use of very bold, bright colors and textures that almost makes it feel accidental. But I know better. I know that it's not. <laughs> It's not accidental. It's very. It's it's on purpose. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah. But but sometimes it's accidental. Yes. Sometimes you're just not paying attention and you grab the wrong color, and it actually it actually changed the painting. But no, I try not to be accidental. <laughs> no, I I see it as very intentional, but it has that that loose free quality that feels like it just kind of came out <laughs> and and i appreciate that about your work did you have a moment adam where you you knew that you were going to turn to your art to make a living or did it just happen gradually and you got comfortable with it it was just a bold move when we moved here i i tried to get involved in in the arts and for how many artists and artistic people or even people that appreciate the arts and culture is so big here with not enough support mm. I kind of knew that this would be a community that it, it might it might fly uh, and it turns out that sam and arm embraced us uh like it might not have worked anywhere else right yeah, community is a big part of it. And uh, it's one of the things that we're talking about being bold in our communities and how the community also supports us and gives us confidence to be bold. And would you find that in your experience of being in this community? Yeah, absolutely. For people like to be involved, be a part of something. And when you come into a place and you do as good as you can, People notice um, we have this, I don't know, our secret sauce, so to speak, is if you work hard and you're nice to everyone, chances are you'll fit in. Fit that's, in and succeed. <laughs> that, that's our secret sauce, though. Work hard and be nice to everyone. Yeah. And you know what, Adam, you, you do work hard and you are nice to everyone. I've been in your studio and your cafe and you, you look everyone in the eye and make everyone feel special and you make everyone feel like they can be an artist too. And at one point you had told me that you have no secrets, 
which I think is amazing. And what does it um, take for you as an artist to be that kind of artist who has no secrets? Ah, it's vulnerability for sure. Like um, to have an unfinished piece of artwork on the floor at home is one thing, but for it to be in public or hanging on the wall, you get some scrutiny when you don't have secrets yet. So when you go to start a piece, Adam, do you have a real strategy in mind or do you let a piece take a life of its own and sort of speak to you and bring itself into existence? How do you approach it? And in that question, I want to ask a double question of how you approach color in that piece too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it depends like the, to answer the, the, the approach, it depends on the situation. Um, if, if the client says that I have, I have six months or something, um, I'm going to approach it real slow and really think about how I'm going to do it or the exact point of view of, of the viewer, where are they going to be like really thinking about it. Whereas if I'm in a different situation, I just did one on, on the weekend, just, uh, a live commission for, for the client and their friends and family watching, right? Mm -hmm. When I approach that one, it's not so careful. It's, it's like back to basics. I'm going to get shape and form and put everything in place. And I'm not going to plan or draw or anything. I'm going to attack it with my favorite colors and let them influence me from there by, by what they're saying. And, and even uh, the reaction, if I put something bold on there, oh, that might have been the wrong choice. So the, the two approaches, um, they, they work the same, but one is really quick on the fly, and the other is really methodical, and I have, I have time to, to think mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the end result. Right. Man, sometimes those quick ones are better than anything I could have thought because you're you're dealing with instinct you're dealing with fight or flight you're mm -hmm. you're dealing with your ego you do not want to look bad and it could stop that that um that way of painting altogether because mm -hmm. you have all these people watching and if it doesn't turn out then it's it's not going to catch on Forever. Yes. And I think you're describing the times that you speed paint and you paint in public. Yeah. And um, what you were speaking about the live commission, uh, you've described to me before that people come to your cafe and sit um, dine, have a dining experience and watch you paint you, their commission right in front, which is such a bold move. Yeah, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about bold, bold color, bold moves here. And that is such a bold move to paint live right in front of the person paying you for the commission. Can you just tell me a little bit about that and what it takes to be that bold? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you have to have confidence and hope confidence that um that that is unwavering even if it's fake just just being confident so the client is enjoying themselves mm -hmm. and they fall in love with it as they they see it happen and hope that that your brain is working right that day that you're in a good place to 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 put down paint in a in a pleasing way instead of a, maybe a way that would be dark or stormy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's take confidence and, and hope. And it, like when you, when you paint every day, when you do anything every day, you get better and better and better. If, if you um, brush your teeth always with your right hand and then you try your left hand, it's not going to work the same. So this is the same as painting. If you never use that hand or you use that hand only for writing or only for doodling down notes, you're not going to have that muscle memory that remember how to, to leave texture or, or dig up some, some brightness or yeah, muscle memory painting every day. 
Mm -hmm. get that confidence to pull it off somehow. Yeah. The practice. Yeah. The practice, practice. Yeah. And, um, and I guess that goes to say that we can practice confidence as well. So what you said, even if you don't feel it, just fake it and be it and practice it. <laughs> and yeah. eventually, eventually you, you have breakthroughs in the levels of confidence and it becomes more natural. Hmm. And, um, yeah, that's a good thing for anyone in the arts to remember, to just keep practicing until the confidence breaks through. Yeah, absolutely. Mm hmm there's so many different styles of painting with within so many different mediums. There is room for expression and appreciation, no matter no matter the the way it's put down. Or because we are we are all going to paint a little bit different because we all have different different hands. So I think there's lots of room for for people to gain confidence and know that their expressions are worth it. So Adam, how do you approach color? You use such bold colors. I'm even thinking right now of a piece that you have with a ram, um, mm -hmm. your, your big ram. And in some ways there's a lot of neutral colors. How do you approach that? Do you plan it? Do you um, really stick to the color wheel and your theory? Yep, yep, absolutely. I. I have a, a certain certain pigment, certain paint that I that I buy and I've always bought. It's just ten colors, including black and white. Um, I have favorite colors that I like to use in certain places, whether it's to to create contrast or or create something warm or cool. And I feel like in in those deep dark colors within within shadow you can use just about any color in its pure richest form to to gain a little extra depth or or a little extra richness within within something that can be so bland our shadows and our light you can really manipulate just by warming them up or cooling them down so yeah, using color theory is a major. If I'm if I'm mixing some odd color that I just love, and it's not going the way I want it to go, I'm definitely going to go back to the fundamentals and go to the color wheel, and and change it appropriately with that. Uh, and yeah, I I really like doing what I want. So if I if I break the rules a little bit and put a color that doesn't belong somewhere, but I like it, then I'm going to spread that around a bit. I, I really love color, and I really love the fact that you can so easily change a mood just with, with how, much, how much white you put in it, how much brightness, how much um, richness within, within the purest shadows of, of a painting. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful and anyone that uses a pencil knows what they're missing mm -hmm. <laughs> so would you say for someone who's starting out as a painter that they should put a pretty heavy priority on learning color theory yeah absolutely it is the the biggest thing that I that I teach um, novice and even skilled <sighs> skilled painters is, is color theory and it all comes rushing back like they're riding a bike but it, it never probably sunk in because we have we have all these colors we like and they usually work for us but when they don't work that's when we have to go back and see what we're doing not wrong but see what we're what we could do to make it easier color theory is it's huge composition is going to going to find its way in whether you want it or not because you're going to move things if it doesn't look right you're going to lay things out in a, in a pleasing fashion but if if we are using even the most simplest um, realistic colors within those individual colors there's so much color within it that we're allowed to 
exaggerate and and it, it using that color theory is a real safe way to exaggerate it, mm. like a, if you're doing a shadow in pink we could we could darken that shadow with, with something as wild as black or brown or blue or but if we use color theory and we actually use a nice rich green it's a safe way to bring it back or forward and yeah so it's back to those basics of the color theory that's where those those pioneers in the arts have just made it so much easier for us i don't like you when i'm painting i'm trying to do everything in one brush stroke i'm trying to create that portrait in as least brush or least amount of brush strokes possible so that i so that my my approach is, is bold for lack of a better term i guess that's the best term mm -hmm. so, so that my approach is bold and people can see what i've done with that brush and by not not having things perfect it obscures it a bit so that the imagination looks at it as perfect yeah. mm. If that, that's good. No. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so though your work has many layers, like you, you can look through the layers and see that you've applied m many different coats and, and, but yet you're taking the approach that you want to do it in as least amount of brush strokes as possible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. It looks like it maybe took months, but but it was probably just a few sittings and yeah, doing it on purpose, painting on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does painting on purpose mean to you? Unpack that one a little for me. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of that, uh, I got no secrets. So that's my secret for, <laughs> for those live paintings or those, those times where I have to pull it off in four hours or I broke, broke a promise. Mm -hmm. so I'm done using every brush stroke on purpose so that I don't have to go back unless I don't like it. But the goal is to be to be so confident, so sure of the shape and form that you're creating that you can lay it down just once. It doesn't have to torture you. You don't have to scrub and scratch. You can if that's the, the, the effect you're looking for. But you can do that on purpose really quick and move on to the the next spot i know it's not all about being quick but it sure sure helps me to stay loose and be free and mm -hmm. enjoy what i'm doing mm -hmm. yes um yeah talk about staying loose for a minute because you know that's one of the things we're admiring about your work is not only the bold colors and the boldness of you as as an artist in your personality and character but also uh, the boldness of being loose, it actually is very bold and brave to be loose. And would you agree with that? And what does that mean to you? It is kind of brave because it could look like a mess if you're not doing it on purpose. If, if you're being loose, but you have no direction, then it could look chaotic. It could not maybe make sense. And there there's room for that. There's lots of um, static or places that aren't of, of focus that you can be a little bit sloppy or messy on purpose and get mm. away with it. That That's one of those things that I have to tell myself every time I'm painting is, uh, okay, step back, be, be a little bit looser, hold your paintbrush at the end instead of choking right up like, going for a home run, stressing mm -hmm. out. And grab a brush that's bigger than that you're comfortable with so that you get more practice with a bigger brush trying to do smaller things. So I will constantly put my little brushes away and grab a bigger brush and kind of, if I sit and paint, I get a little bit tight as well, so I'll stand up and kind of joust with the canvas a bit, stepping mm -hmm. back and going forward just to make sure that I'm on the right track and uh, that I'm staying loose and kind of moving about a bit. 
Yeah. <laughs> Excellent tips for staying loose in the paintings. And, um, and so we did talk about color and color theory. Would you have anything specifically to encourage how to encourage an artist in using bold color and stepping out into a brave new realm? I hear it from artists a lot that, that they want to be braver and bolder, especially in their use of color. What would you say to that one who's looking to step out of their comfort zone and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh there's there's a real neat way to 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 look at that say say you're you you've got a photo that you took and you it means a lot to you and you really want to express yourself at the same time so that it's totally you well if that image is in black and white and you disregard stereotypes like the sky is blue trees are green you can grab a uh, couple of your colors and some white, maybe some black if you're into that. A lot of painters don't use black, but you can use a dark color, your your pure color for your for your darks. But just grab a couple of colors in white and your black and white photo and try to achieve it with, with a limited palette. And when you're done that painting with a limited palette and you put colors where they don't belong, but it makes sense because it's monochromatic, you, you're using values to get shape and form. What if, what if you Andy Warhol that and you made a, a green one, a pink one, a blue one, a purple one? They would all work on their own. So they could probably all work together. If you put those bold colors by themselves or together, I think they would work out. So really forgetting the, the stereotypical colors. If you need to use blue in the sky to make it look like a sky or to get contrast between mountains or something, then yeah, absolutely do it. But it's okay to, to put color where you, where you wouldn't expect it. And that's mm -hmm. a good way to show people that you're, you're bold. Wow. I love that. I love that. Um, yeah. So just, I think what you just told us there was an exercise that we can all do to sort of break out of that stereotypical using a photograph. And I, I'm actually going to try that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you consider yourself a bold person by nature, Adam? You're bold in your artwork. You've made bold moves um, with your studio and your cafe. Are you, do you consider yourself bold? I suppose I suppose I am bold. Maybe brave or or dumb or both. <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm I'm bold because I'm I may I may have fears in my life and one of those things is is I don't know, not being not being very good at something, not being good at interviews or or public speaking or or something like that. It's just I don't like being less than, so in order to do that, I have to take chances and be bold. I'll tell you a little story about the five-year-old Adam was so shy that if an adult looked at me, it almost I'd well up, I'd almost start crying. Mm. And I've always been shy, still shy. But I did something on my on my wedding to kind of break out that of that fear so i got in front of you know friends and family a couple hundred people and i i, I sang a song that i wrote and i've been singing ever since but wow. but i broke that it was the hardest thing i've ever done and uh, now i public speak and i'm on different meetings where I, where i have to stand up and say my opinion and uh, run a business like there's there's things that i couldn't have done without pushing myself without being bold mm -hmm. so if you weren't bold by nature like as a child then it's like you have taught yourself and forced yourself into braver and braver positions to where now you are speed painting in front of commission clients and <laughs> you know, public speaking, being on boards, a leader in your community in the arts, teaching, 
And so it really just goes to show that anyone can be bold. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a chance. It's a choice. And it really pays off in, in a way, not necessarily for gain, but, but for joy, for, for knowing that you could do something. You can mm. do something great too, or mm. something exciting or bold. Are there any other thoughts on your mind, Adam, that that you would like to encourage other artists, whether it be about bold color or making bold, brave, brave moves as an artist? Is there any other thoughts you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, every once in a while, do a painting for yourself instead of the the masses, and uh, instead of trying to trying to impress someone or or the whole world, just do a painting for yourself. Do something that you want to do and you would hang on your wall and you could be proud of. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll come out with something way better than, than trying to impress. Mm, you'll impress that's yourself. very good advice. <laughs> yes, that's very good advice. Painting for yourself, you leave a little bit in that painting, which gives your body of work a certain mm -hmm. amount of consistency too. It's a good right. thing. Yeah. That's a really good point. I never thought of it that way. That's great. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to share your yeah. secrets, your secret sauce, a little bit about <laughs> your color theory and your bold moves. Um, really appreciate having you on the show. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>